What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today with more main assembly and today we're going to keep going with the challenges. We're finally into the logistics challenges. We beat all the driving of course and we beat all the survival. This one, you know, only has two stars. And now we're into the logistics challenges. We're into the box loader challenge. Now the last time we played this challenge, we created a dummy movement optimization system uh, and it was quite uh, efficient. But today we're going to actually try and beat the challenge. So it appears we have to move boxes into the container, uh, move boxes into the container. I guess there's two containers and we don't hurt any dummies. All right. So I guess this is probably the container we have to move stuff into. It looks like it's got a counter there that's going to count the number of boxes we put into it. And I guess these are the boxes on these pallets. Um, it gives us a height of 150 centimeters. So we know. So that's good. And we've got some pallets here, some pallets here. Uh, some there and oh the objectives actually change. That's kind of weird It says move boxes in the container now don't hurt any dummies and throw at least 16 boxes into the water um, So we can probably load just two pallets into the container to get the eight boxes and we can probably throw Oh, there's more boxes here. Are there more boxes? Way out here. There's some boxes back there. I don't know if that's a thing or not. No, I think I think all the boxes. Oh, there's some boxes here. Okay, perfect So we should have enough to just throw two pallets into the container and a bunch into the water. So I guess the first thing we need to do is make some kind of a forklift. Um, haven't really tried to do that yet in main assembly. Now, I know they have a built-in forklift part. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do um, is just, you know, build ourselves a little bit of a structure out on the front. And this will be, of course, for supporting the piston. We're gonna need a lot of weight in the back. Um, you know, that's gonna be a thing. But here we go, let's see. So piston, this is extremely tall. What? Holy cow, that is so tall. I thought it was going to be a lot smaller than this. That is a massive, massive piston. Um, you know what? It, it, it should be fine, right? Like, it's... What's the distance this thing can go? It can go all the way up to 100 centimeters. And those are... But those are 1.5 meters. All right, well, we're going to need, like, two of these then. Okay, so let's put this here, right in the middle. That looks good. I mean, that... You know what? The pistons don't look so large anymore. This actually... This actually might work. This might be okay. All right. And then we'll put some wheels down, of course. And we're just going to put two wheels in the front, two wheels in the back. We'll do with the motor suspension combo. And that way we can control, um, you know, all the properties and hopefully have a smoother ride. There we go. Two in the front. We're going to bring this back much, much further. And we'll put two in the back as well. All right, and now let's just put a seat on it uh, really quick just to see if we line up with the pallet height. Obviously, this isn't really uh, efficient, and we're going to have our turning in the front still, so we need to change that. Oh, my goodness. Look at how floppy that forklift piece is. It, like, swivels depending on the pistons. You know what? It, I, I don't know why that's so... Look at that. Look at... You see that? Whatever. It's fine. We'll just leave it like that. Um, can we fit in there? Does this work? You know, it kind of jams, kind of jams the boxes, right? Yeah. Wonder if there's a way. Oh, the train. Oh, the oh. Well, that wasn't my fault. Now I'm actually realizing the front suspension is causing us an issue because the front suspension is actually compressing, which means the forks are just getting lower to the ground because of the excess weight. So let's actually remove the front suspension. We'll just put standard drive motors on the front. But we'll keep the steering suspension combo on the back because that way we can actually still have a easy integrated steering system. So let's just extrude this out a little bit and we'll put a couple of just small drive motors on the front. Perfect. And we'll of course put those medium standard wheels back and we could probably bring this out even a little bit more. Or you know what? We can just double up the wheels on the front even if we wanted to. Perfect. All right, there we go. We've got a little bit more of a frame going on now and... Uh... Is there a way to adjust the suspension stiffness, I wonder? Can I go to properties, power, acceleration, braking strength, steering angle, rotation, and tint? No, I can't adjust the suspension. That's unfortunate. That would be a cool thing, I think, to be able to do. But uh, let's extrude this up. We're going to need weight. I don't exactly know how we create weight in this game. Is there like a weight block somewhere? Miscellaneous tools. Friction pad. Okay. Plow. Cockpits. Oh, they have an actual, like, forklift cockpit. This is awesome. Oh, yeah, we gotta put one of those on it for sure. All right, so I put a little bit of a body on it. It kind of looks, I mean, something like a forklift 
ish sort of I guess um, you know again the front's just sort of some piston stuff I don't think this is still enough weight let's just try it out here the forks the forks still kind of sag so we definitely need to add a lot of weight to the back um, to make sure that suspension is just fully compressed on the back and then of course we got to do some control stuff so how can we add a lot of weight you know what let's bring this in a little bit oh that looks you know that looks so much better I love how you can just freeform craft in this it's great you know what? we can just like taper these ends in a little bit you know not bad for a 30 second forklift it looks pretty decent now weight I mean I know the motors are really heavy uh, these large motors here uh, 12 kilos uh, for 15 but jet engines are really really big uh, wheels are 12 kilos but again really really big chassis is just chassis mechanical stuff one kilo that's not that's not really heavy enough uh, what else we got sensors and miscellaneous so we got any tools that are really heavy the bumpers four and of course the cockpits and the weapons that's eight so you know what I think we just have to stick with the large motors and just kind of put them inside somewhere to hide them up a little bit. There we go. We can put them right in there. All right. So we've got a completely blank slate here. Obviously, it's uh, it's going to be a little confusing with all this stuff. But anyways, input, output. So we need an input. Uh, and this will, of course, be our WS. And uh, motors. We need drive motors small alpha. Those are the steering ones. So we definitely need those. And then we need to figure out which one's small. Okay, the you know what? It's both small motors. That's right. We use large motors for everything else. So this actually isn't too bad. So all four wheels are going to drive. And then, of course, we have another input for steering. And if we select A and D for that. And, of course, for steering, we then take the drive motor alpha and we put the steering directly connected into A and D. And I think this should work in terms of our ability to drive around. So let's just test this real quick. But I think if we turn left, it turns left. Right, it turns right. That's awesome. We go forward. There we go. It's you know it's a pretty good looking forklift. The uh, the pistons in the front are still kind of wobbly, and those that fork is massive. I don't think we really need a fork that big. Perfect. That looks great. Coincidentally, too, it seems like uh, they're almost the exact same in terms of the total mounting point. I didn't have to adjust this at all, so that looks pretty good, and. Still still floppy for some reason. Our structure's not that rigid. But overall, it's not too bad. Uh, we do have to restart this level, of course. And we are we are dragging around a bit. Um, we definitely need to make the pistons work. So let's do that real quick. To do the pistons is actually pretty easy. So mechanically, we just need our two pistons. Um, and you can set the extension value. Range is 1 to negative 1. And I did this really kind of fancy one way before. And I don't remember how I did it. But I think we just have two axes, one and two. And I think in order to do this piston, it's actually pretty simple in this. I believe there is a logic... I'm trying to figure out where the heck it is now. State, accumulate. Here we go. So, accumulate's a really cool value. And you'll see it constantly accumulates the first input and returns it as the output. If the second input is above a certain threshold, resets the stored value. Now, the pistons go between zero and one. And the inputs go between negative 1 and positive 1. And what that does when we feed it into the accumulate is it just keeps adding to the accumulate value, which then goes to both pistons. Now, this might seem confusing, but really what it lets us do is something really, really neat. So now if we press 1, both pistons extend slightly. And if we press 2, both pistons retract. And they'll stop wherever we set them to stop to. So we can go all the way up. We can go all the way down. And we can go anywhere in between. So obviously this setup works really well uh, in the sense that you can have, you know, a very custom position for your pistons. We don't have to worry about having the exact 150 centimeters as long as we can go above the shelf completely. And that's really, really good. But we want it to move a lot slower. Um, obviously trying to pick up something, you know, when you're, you're going this fast is probably not a good idea. So what we're going to do is we're just going to change that really quickly with a math block. So we'll just go into wire and we've got this accumulation state. But instead of feeding it a 1 or a negative 1, we're just going to feed it a smaller value. So we're just going to take this and apply some math to it. So we'll divide our initial signal by a value of 10, let's say. So a constant value here. And if we take our constant and we set it to a value of 10. Now this initial signal is divided by 10 every time before it gets accumulated and then sends the signal to the piston. So if we try this now, we should still get the full range of motion if we hold all the way up to the top with one 
and we can let go and of course come all the way back down but you can see it's 10 times slower than it was before because it's not really going as fast through those numbers so this i think is the perfect forklift we just need to uh we just need to paint it and then we should be able to do this challenge all right so i've restarted the logistics challenge so we don't get that don't hurt any dummies and i mean let's just see how this forklift goes so we can definitely drive uh you know it has no problems turning it's definitely better when you bring that off the ground and of course we can make our piston go up and down pretty easily so uh we got to move boxes into the container so let's try grabbing this box real quick by this dummy and try not to hurt him um, this is very interesting. Of course, the train's gonna come too, so you better not get hit by the train as well. I'm really worried about what's gonna happen when we try and lift this up. The forklift seems so much bigger when you compare it to the size of the robot, and then you look at the size of the pallet and you realize the forklift is absolutely tiny. But anyways, alright, here we go. Can we, can we just, alright, just slowly, slow, slow, slowly, slowly. Alright, we're gonna bring this away from the hem. Okay, and then line it up again. They're perfect up oh yeah look at that so good it's it's definitely leaning um a little bit and the boxes are i don't know what the boxes are doing you know what? that's that seems too high up to move let's just we're good this is great i can't believe this works this is so awesome what a great little for why is there a dummy there dude i'm trying to do something can you please move okay you know what that wasn't actually that bad you're you're pretty out of the way move boxes oh wow we actually only need to do one all right well that's easy enough we'll just bring this down back out oh this is awesome i absolutely love this can i just be a professional forklift person now like a forklift operator this seems so much fun i mean you know i feel like it'd be more stressful if you actually had a time limit but all right we'll get this box we got to throw some into the water so let's just do that um I don't know how we're gonna do this. We don't really have a brake on this vehicle, so let's just, uh, uh oh, uh oh, okay. We'll just bring this down nice and low. And we'll just, there we go. That, come on, boxes. Oh, they're slowly sinking. Okay, they're sinking, perfect. All right, let's get more boxes now and put them in the water. Um, I'm not exactly sure how we're supposed to get those. You know what, let's try this, but I feel like we're too long. I didn't even think about actually having to get into these shelves. Like, how are you supposed to... You need, like, a side-grabbing forklift device. I, I don't know if we can do this. Let's try it. Hold on. Back up. Back up. No, no, no. We're stuck. You know what? Let's go in forward. What am I doing? Let's, let's go in forward. We've got way more space. Let's turn around here. Oh, no! It's okay we can respawn i don't think it changes our score no it doesn't perfect you know what we might just not be able to get these boxes but that's okay they did put an excess of boxes on the map so it's not like we have to get these ones uh, i'm gonna try one more time here but i just don't think this thing was built with a tight enough turning radius i mean it just doesn't seem like it can do it it can we oh i almost pushed it hold on hold on maybe we can slide it over a little no that was uh, okay uh, there's just these anchors and stuff Okay, hold on. Push! Give her all she's got! Ugh, okay. Oh, you know what? We did it. We did it. We got it. We got it. Now we just, just gotta jam this over there. There we go. Yeah, no, this is perfect. This is per it's not fragile, is it? It doesn't say, I don't think, so we're fine. Oh, boy. Um, I'm just gonna walk away from that. Well, I forgot to despawn that forklift, so now it's just it's just there. Um, I guess we'll just leave those boxes. You know, maybe we can get the top shelf one. I don't think we really can, considering we couldn't get the bottom shelf one, but let's try this and see if we can get the top shelf. Maybe we can come in from the side here and just grab this one. Uh, like, no, that this is, uh, yeah. You ever wondered what happens in... Oh my goodness. Uh... Okay, let's see if we can just grab this. Um, you know what? No, that, that whole stack is a lost cause. We're going over here now. We only need seven more boxes. No, I killed the dummy! No! I forgot not to hit the dummy. I hit the dummy. Oh, you know, we gotta just restart the whole map. 
All right, attempt number two. Here we go. Let's go for the easy pallet first. We'll grab this one and just put it right into the box. Should be relatively easy to do. Look at that. Perfect. Grab that, lift it up a little bit, back up. Easy mode. We're not even going to bother with that shelf because obviously that shelf is just a nightmare. Perfect. All eight boxes in there. Drop this off. I love this. This is so much fun. This forklift is great. Can't wait to build more logistics type things. Having to actually like do a task in this game is so much fun. Um, we got to put some boxes in the water. So let's just grab these and throw them in. And we'll try and... Oh, oh, whoops, whoops. That was bad. Hopefully we don't lose all the... Oh, we just lost some. Okay, this is... We are in risky territory. We are probably going to clip that dummy. Uh, just do it anyways. Who cares? Come on. Come on. Careful. 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 Okay, back up, back up. That's fine. We lost a couple boxes. These don't... It doesn't really matter. We're going to just... Yeet all these boxes anyways. Here we go. Yeet. Yo. Oh, no. Oh. I just realized too we can literally respawn the forklift infinite times. So we might as well not even try to unload this into the water. Just lift it up. Line up. Screw up a bit. And just, you know, full speed. There we go. Alright, so that's ten. Um, now there were two more pallets at the train station. I guess we could, you know, plow some of these boxes as well. But we don't really need to. As long as that dummy doesn't get hit, I'm really worried about that one with the boxes near him. Alright, so let's go in here. There's these two pallets. We should be able to grab these and just throw them in the thing and then just go to the finish. I mean, it's a pretty easy challenge as long as you don't hit those stupid dummies. Alright. Looking good. Looking not so good. Looking, oh my goodness. I am a really horrible forklift driver. Oh boy. Oh boy. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. There we go. Perfect. Oh my goodness. That, uh, that fork twists a lot. Alright. Oh no, we lost so many boxes there. Alright, whatever. It doesn't matter. We've got some anyways. Uh, full speed. Yep. Another three to add to the pile. Okay, so we need three more. Okay. Uh... Is the train gonna... Please don't kill the dummy. Please don't kill the dummy. Please don't... Okay. Alright, good. We only need three more boxes, but that's fine. We'll just grab that last pallet, and hopefully that's enough boxes. And if not, we'll just have to shove some of these in. Okay, I don't, I don't know what, what just happened there, but for some reason, this is what we're dealing with now. We lost a part, too. I don't... I hope that part wasn't important. Let's just go really, really slow. Let's keep this nice and low as well. And, uh, hopefully we can keep some of these boxes on. My goodness, this is, uh, this is much more difficult than I thought it would be. Alright, we're doing okay. Just, just nice and slow, slow down the, slow down the, the, down the ramp. No. Are you serious right now? Like, how many, how many boxes do we, I think we still have just enough. I think we have three. Exactly three, and we need three. Oh my, no, now we have two. We're pushing one, though, so that's okay. Look at that. Perfect. All 16 boxes in the water. Easy. No problem. Let's, uh, let's just get to the finish before the train. Oh my goodness. What a mess. I hope those weren't any of your packages that you needed because, uh, they're not, they're not going anywhere. Look at that. Logistics won. Perfect three-star score. Nobody can even question how awesome that is. Absolutely amazing. I can't believe that. I think at some point we might have to re-engineer this forklift. Probably put another like rotating piece on the front fork so you can actually, you know, rotate and grab stuff on a bit of an angle. But of course, let me know what you guys think of this game in the comments down below. I'm definitely going to do the other logistics challenges, but I feel like the next episodes of those will be a little bit quicker. I think we can probably use this same forklift as a starting point and really you know, work from there and make something a lot better. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. And while you're at it, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And we'll see y'all next time. All right, back in a fresh map. I'm gonna eat some dummies. Oh my goodness, this is, this is, this is a horrible, this is a horrible, oh my, I can't believe this.